two of the audio tape statement of Joshua Kamasujewski, which I have just flipped over. Okay, Josh. Oh, um, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> during, during one of the times that uh, I was sitting in the bedroom with KK, um, Steve had come in and uh, had motioned for me to, to follow him into the office um, where the occupants of the house could not overhear us talking. And said that uh, we were going to need gasoline. Um, and I was surprised uh, that gasoline was even a factor in what was going on here. We were just supposed to get the money and, and get out. And he was going on and on and on about DNA and, and even the drop of sweat or uh, a hair falling off your head uh, was enough to to put us in jail because we were to have our DNA on, on record. Um, he had first mentioned that um, that we would take the occupants of the home with us uh, in their vehicles uh, and leave the house burning uh, their way. Um, I was a little stunned and perplexed about the whole situation. And he went back downstairs uh, and I went back into um, KK's room. Um, about 15 minutes later, Steve came back in motion for me to go back into the office with him. And again, ranting and raving about DNA. And he was mad at me because I had, on several occasions, accidentally used his name in front of um, the occupants of the house. Um, and I thought I said, you know, we gotta kill him. You know, we gotta what? We gotta kill him. Kill him? Yeah, kill the, the, the family and the birth house down. On top of them. Um, that was that was not a, that was not the plan. I, I, I'm, I'm not killing anyone. You know, it's just, that's not how it's going down. Like we were here simply for the money, get in and get out. You know, it's almost nine o'clock. You know, why why are you bugging out now? You know, you I was and I had gotten on his case. If he was so worried about DNA, why was he walking around without his gloves on now? He had removed his gloves? Yeah, yeah, he had removed his gloves. And I was like, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Why did he do that? I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. But he, at this point, he no longer has gloves on. He had no longer has gloves on. You still do? But I, I had gloves on the entire time. Are your masks still on your heads? Um, sometimes. Um, we Sometimes we'd fold it up um, so that we could pull it down at a moment's notice. Um, we had put... Um, Cases over the occupants' heads. Um, yeah. yeah, so that they couldn't see us. Um, when did you do that? Um, we had done that um, after um, after we had split them up, and then come, came back from the car ride because um, it was getting a little it was diff- a little more difficult to be walking around the house with these very awkward you know, face shields that we come up with on the fly. So you covered their faces because you wanted to uncover your face? Yes, correct, yes. Okay, were you trying to suffocate them at that time? No, not at all. You were just trying to prevent them from seeing you? Exactly. But at this point, other than you slipping with using Steve's real name, mm-hmm. they really couldn't identify you facially because you were pretty much concealed? Yeah. Okay. I was very confident that they wouldn't be able to, to be able to, you know, recognize us. Okay. So, um, go ahead. As far as, like, the suffocation point, um, or the suffocation thing for the pillowcases, um, like, when we put it over, like, I made a point to, like, roll up, roll it back up, like, put it over their head, but then roll it back up. Did you just cover um, their eyes? So it was just covering their eyes, not their nose and mouth. Okay. Because it, it does get hot and humid, <laughs> you know, underneath the pillowcase, sure. I'm sure, especially when you're stressed. Absolutely. Uh-huh. So, uh, sort of lost my Well, you're, you, you were up to almost 9 o'clock where oh, he's starting to bug out on you as you feel. He's starting to feel the pressure about leaving the house with mom and then having to 
uh, we lose sight of the mom while she went to the bank alone and he in the parking lot. Um, so things are getting a little tense uh, between the two of us. Uh, a tense. Now, what, how did your conversation about killing the family end? He just walked away like it was a statement. It wasn't a conversation. It was a, it was a statement. Okay. You know, that's how it's going to be. You know, and that's that. Okay. Um, in my mind, that's it's simply not an option. It okay. just isn't. Um, Did you voice that to I, I had made mention um, that you know I'm not killing anybody. You know, that's I don't. I'm not going to. In see the care or the center or whatever, I'm focused on going to this drop in the next you know, 10 15 minutes. Okay. Um, just, just to back up a little bit, when he uh, at first mentioned um, about burning the house down, um, he had gone down to the garage mm-hmm. and Taken a bunch of bottles of one gallon bottle, bottles of uh, wipe fluid, okay. and uh, drained those into the kitchen sink. Uh, I heard the, the chugging of something being drained in the sink. I went downstairs to, to see what he was up to this time, and uh, again he had said, "You know, I'm going to go get gas. I'm going to use mom's car. I'll be back." <laughs> so he. At this point, he drains the bottles, and he's going to go get gas. With the bottles. Which he does, in fact, do, taking mom's car, leaving you home with, with everyone else. With everybody okay. else. Leaves me with everybody, and just takes off. Okay, what time do you think that was? Um, the drop was at 9, or the pick was at 9, so this is probably about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Where do you think he went? Well... He didn't, he didn't say where he was going to get it. Um, I was assuming he was probably going to put the gas station right at the moment because it's right there. Right. Um, but he somehow managed to end up over on Main Street heading towards Richard Chevrolet and called me asking if there was a gas station up there. I was like, well, where are you? He's like, I just passed Richard Chevrolet. I was like, well, your next gas station is in the Little Southington. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, oh, well, I'll find one closer, and, and hung up, but then called back you know, 15, 20 minutes later and said, how do I get back to Cheshire from Waterbury? <laughs> so he's calling you saying he's in Waterbury. Yeah. Did he have the gas then? And he apparently had the gas and was on his way back. Okay. Uh, when he had gone back to the house, uh, he had uh, four of those containers Filled with gas. Filled with gasoline, uh, which he put in the garage. Put in the garage, meaning he put them down in the garage, or he yeah, poured yeah. them out? No, he, he put them uh, down in the garage. Okay. And you observed them doing this from where? Uh, from the kitchen. You were in the kitchen? Yeah, or the dinette kitchen area. And there's no one else down there with you, though, correct? Everyone else is upstairs in the bedrooms, or downstairs in the basement? No, Mom, Mom is downstairs. Mom is downstairs? Yeah, she's sitting on the... Uh, uh, so mom has been down there the whole time since she made that call for dad, for her husband from, to from go that, to work Yeah, with. from that point on, she was downstairs for the remainder of the time. Okay. Tied, but not restrained. Tied, but not restrained. Okay. Um, so not a, you know, not for our, like I had made mention before, our original day was quarter of nine. Um, that didn't happen because he made a detour and plan and yeah. got back later and things took longer. He, had, he also wanted to make a bunch of phone calls to, uh, um, to the Bank of America. He calls uh, 411 uh, to get their number okay. um, using the, the home phone um, wanting. He, he basically wanted to get and ask you know, somebody at the branch what he needed specifically. Uh, to withdraw a large amount of a large sum of money from one's own account. Okay. Uh, in general, he is speaking in generalities to them. Um, or was going to. Um, however, he couldn't get through because it wasn't on a clock yet, so there wasn't a bank. So they kept referring him to an 800 number, 
prisoner. An automated system involved. Okay.